Hey guys, how's it going? Kripan here. So with, uh, you know, Whispers of the Old Gods coming up and uh, a few cards are being revealed here and there, um, I kind of gained a lot of appreciation for the idea of, like, corrupting old cards. And, uh, you know, a lot of these cards that they released haven't been uh, particularly strong, I would say, but they have really been uh, very interesting to me, how you can kind of take a card that's either good, maybe not good, and you can just kind of turn it around. You can make it do the opposite of what it does, and thematically it seems so cool. So, uh, you know, I didn't really want to wait for more cards to be released. I wanted to make some of my own because, uh, well, I just had so many ideas going through my head, and, uh, you know, of course, of course, these are fake cards, you know, these are not actual cards in the game. Um, you know, I started with the idea when I wanted to make, uh, you know, they made Corrupted Healbot, and uh, I took Zombie Chow and made Chowrupted Zombie, where, uh, you know, I, I made it have better stats, and I made the, the, the Death Rattle into a Battle Cry, just like the opposite, and I made the, the target of the heal the opposite, just like Corrupted Healbot. You know, obviously the card is completely broken, but, uh, you know, some people had a laugh, and uh, I had a great time making it. So I thought I would make quite a few more. So I made I made ten in total, and I wanted to share with you guys today, so you can kind of get a bit amped up for the uh, the corrupted cards and uh, maybe the old gods expansion as a whole. So, chop the zombie, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I think there's actually some expectation that we'd see a card like this one. Obviously, we're not going to see this card, um, and maybe a few of the ones to come. Now the next one here, Reno Jacks Thun. Yeah, yeah, we we got we got to we got to troll that part a little bit. Um, this was an idea brought to chat, and it really is the inspiration towards this video. Um, uh, the, the chat when I was streaming last night mentioned how cool it would be to have a corrupted Reno Jackson that would kill your opponent, and uh, yeah. That would be pretty cool. So I made one here, the 8 mana 610 with the battle cry if your deck contains exactly two copies of every card, you kill your opponent. Now to have two copies of every card in your deck is almost impossible to keep track of without a deck tracker, and well, it almost, almost never ever happens. So it's going to be the card that just every now and then it'll have that ridiculous game. And I think it will be so rare that it wouldn't even be like a punishing mechanic. Like I don't even think if you're on the receiving end of that, you'd feel that bad. You'd just be like, wow, that guy actually put the card in the deck and lived the dream. Because otherwise the card is obviously not very good as the battle cry won't, won't trigger most of the time. But uh, yeah, see, see how cool some of these like opposite effects can be in the game. And I made Corrupted Bomber. You know, Bomber's one of my favorite cards in the game, and I, uh, I made one that does the opposite. So um, it's a 5-mana 3-6, because, uh, you know, he's a little bit bizarro world. It's a death rattle instead of a battle cry. And he, restore, he restores 15 health randomly split between all other characters. And, of course, this card is uh, bonkers with uh, North Shark Cleric. Uh, but uh, other than that, you just kind of get a pretty fun heal effect. And healing effects in the game are rare enough that I think uh, quite a lot of control decks would choose to play a card like this. But, you know, why play a card that just heals you when you can play a card that randomly heals all the crap on the board randomly? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You know, that, that's some real Hearthstone, uh, some real Hearthstone mechanics. <laughs> then we have uh, Engorged Ooze. Uh, I took the Acidic uh, Swamp Ooze and, uh, you know, it, it just, it just ate too many weapons. You know, I mean, uh, the, the weapons have to go somewhere. I don't think it digests them very quickly. So this has been a particularly successful Acidic Swamp Ooze that has just grown way too fat. And when you kill it, it's going to deliver a, a weapon to the Slayer, which is your opponent. I made it a 7 mana 514 because it's just obviously way too big. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's okay. Um, most most of the weapons uh, are pretty good except for Cursed Blade. Um, but uh, in, in general, I kind of wanted this idea of having a really, really fat minion that was really big, uh, kind of like some of the epic dragons in the game, but, you know, without that ability and just a, at a little bit of a discount. So pretty good stuff. I mean, the Bloodsmith. So this is Master Swordsmith, a card which you guys probably never even heard of, but it is actually a card that buffs the, um, the, the attack of one of your minions by one at the end of your turn for two mana. It's a 1-3. Uh, Bloodsmith, I thought, would be interesting because uh, it does a little bit more than that. It uses itself to buff the other minions. It's a little bit, uh, you know, uh, whispery, old gaudy, twilighty type of stuff. And uh, I thought it would be cool to have a minion like this because um, you can scale buffs. So 
the problem with, with the game with, with buffs in the game is that they really only support aggro decks generally. Uh, you use a buff and instead of like a charge minion, basically. Uh, buffs are not very good because you, if you invest them on a minion, that minion usually becomes a target of hard removal, and thus you had a very inefficient way to use your mana and resources and value by investing more than one card into one card that can be removed by one card. So Bloodsmith kind of helps that and I think bridges the gap between um, you know buffs that just kind of suck to using buffs in a control or mid-range environment for value. So you can buff this guy up and he can transfer his stats to a random other minion. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. And I made Nat Cthulhu. Oh yeah, Nat Pagel, boys. It's, uh, it's time to draw your deck. Uh, at the start of your turn, draw cards until your deck is empty. Um, I, you know, I've, I've kind of advocated for a card like this for a while now. I think it would be so hilarious because, um, you know, at some point, it's good to draw cards because you draw cards, you have more cards than your opponent, you can waste them more, you can play a lower curve deck, so you can play more things. Smaller cards are generally more mana efficient than larger cards. Um, but, you know, some people like to draw a lot, and uh, I like to explore the aspect of drawing way, way, way too much. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you can draw your deck. It's basically like drawing nine cards in the absolute best case scenario, but you have to win with exactly those cards. You will not have any more uh, in your deck at any point. So that's what I like about it. Um, yeah, why not? Put a put a Pthulhu in there. And then uh, I thought about the Murlocs. Uh, it seems like there might be a Murloc in the expansion, so I made Misformed Tyrant. Uh, all the Murlocs right now really just buff each other. They have the huge synergistic aspects. But if you really want to like corrupt a Murloc, the way you're going to do it is you're going to make it so he hates on all the non-Murlocs. You know, that, that would kind of be uh, themat thematic with the Murlocs, but also work with the Corrupted theme. So the Misformed Tyrant uh, really just hates everyone else. Uh, all other minions have minus one, minus one, unless they are Murlocs. And, you know, I, I distribute the stats that way because this card would be really, really insane if um, the player that you played it against had a lot of like 1, 2, or 1, 3 minions because their board might be filled with minions that can't attack. And that's really, really broken. So um, we haven't really seen the, the, the minus minus type of theme in Hearthstone yet. We've only seen the, the stat bonuses. Um, but I think it could work. It just it is really, really powerful in a game like this one. So you'd have, you do have to be a bit careful with it. And then I made Spell Restorer, which is kind of like uh, opposite land of Spell Breaker. Um, I thought it would be cool to have like a silence removal effect. Um, but also, you know, it's, it's probably better to have a more broad effect because, yeah, people play silences, but not that many people. Not everybody uh, has, has silences in their deck. So just to, to match up a silence against another silence, you kind of need a more a more broad way to counter a silence. So the Spell Restorer just resummons the minion. So the battle cry would basically just trigger again. Uh, this card is probably quite broken. Okay, it's definitely really, 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 really broken, especially when comboed with some of the old gods that I imagine would have ridiculous battle cry abilities. Then I mean Nazdormu, the last hope. So the best part about Nazdormu for me, the 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 part that we that we play with these days is. Um, you know, playing out all the different actions with Nazdormu and then ending my turn so there's some animations going into my opponent's turn and taking that 15 seconds as allowed by Nazdormu to like down a 5, down a 0 in some very, very rare cases. Now, when this happens to, to players, they generally feel quite cheated, but um, it's happened to me a few times and I thought most of the times it was actually super hilarious. So I know some people would probably hate this aspect, but I, I like the aspect of strategically using your turn timer. Uh, rather than trying to manage the time within the allowed time, you can leverage your ability to play very quickly against your opponent with uh, this this corrupted Nazdormu card. The the battle cry uh, makes it so your enemy has as long as you took on your turn. So the idea is the reason he's the the last hope is because when you hit like nine or ten mana and you're generally quite screwed, you would play this guy and hit end turn as fast as possible, and you could probably do that in like two seconds, um, and basically you 
might skip your opponent's next turn. Okay, that's pretty broken. Maybe we maybe we should make him a little bit a little bit worse stats than that. But anyway, you get the idea. I really I really like that aspect. And uh, you know, Blizzard has shown a few corrupted legendaries, some reissues from the classic set. So um, you know, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if you know probably not in this form, but if we do see like another Nazdormu or another few other type of legendary cards. And the last one, this was inspired by a user from Reddit. K Clear mentioned that it'd be really cool to have, um, you know, like a 50% chance to hit uh, Cthune wherever it is, because that's like the new mechanic where minions can get buffed or debuffed while they're in your deck, and they maintain those buffs when you draw them and when you play them again with the return effects. Well, Ogre Savant kind of does the opposite of that. He's not so happy with, um, you know, all these old gods and all these other minions gaining buffs while they can't be targeted. So he kind of he kind of just hates on that stuff. And he's he's just a genius ogre. You know, the ogre Savant. I mean, you know, there, there's got to be a few exceptions to the guys who just miss and lose the game for you constantly. And here it is. So 50% chance to attack an additional enemy wherever it is. So he, he basically just slams down some hate on the minions in, uh, in your opponent's deck. Yeah, that'd be cool. Overall, I'm very excited and a very, very, really just, I can't wait to see more of these corrupted cards more than anything. You know, you'd think with an expansion like Whispers of the Old Gods, you'd be like the most excited to see like the Old Gods and stuff. But because it's Hearthstone, I I have extreme pessimism towards minions that cost like eight, nine, or ten mana because they've they've never ever been game defining or really very good at all. But when it comes to reissuing and making like opposite versions of some of the cool cards we already have, I am I'm amazed at what we've seen so far, and I'm very anticipated to see the rest. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed some of my cards and are as excited as I am about the future. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.